Right. Yeah, man, brother, this has been one of the most interesting trips we've done together by right. far. Yeah. Uh, both you and I have traveled quite a bit around the world. Um, quite a bit. And I think that of all the things we've done, this has been a, probably one of the more memorable ones, man. So. And you know what's funny? I feel like each trip we do, it gets better and better. Each trip becomes like, oh yeah, no, this is my favorite trip. Oh no, this one's my favorite trip. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think that there's gonna be some intricacies about this one that are gonna remain the, the most interesting for a while though. The Absolutely. Middle East, I think, gets uh, just on, on the part of the world that we live in, it gets a lot of bad rep. Um, a lot of it's unwarranted for sure. Yeah. The people over here, both in Jordan and Lebanon, have been amazing. Like, the I mean, most hospitable, the most receptive people, just warm-hearted people I've ever met. It's been awesome. It's, it's been fantastic, and, and it really uh, puts things into perspective, especially, like you said, about um, people having the wrong idea, being misinformed about stuff. So it's, it's always, I mean, just the experience of experiencing it firsthand has, has, has been yeah. life-changing, literally life-changing. Yeah, and I think it's something that you, you can't, there's no substitute for first-hand experience. Yeah, no, not at all. You can watch as much TV, you can watch as much news as you want, you can, you know, go on the internet as much as you want, and I don't think there's anything that substitutes coming over to wherever, not just here, going anywhere in the world, having a conversation firsthand with the people from that place, and then getting multiple different perspectives too, you know, going to another country, hearing what they have to say, being over here in Lebanon, hearing what they have to say over here, go over to Palestine, over to Israel, see what they have to say. It's pretty interesting. It is, it is. And uh, I mean, I'm excited to see what else we, I mean, we've only been here, what, a day and a half, two days? Two days, yes. Yeah, stuff yeah. that we've learned and the experiences yeah. that we've had already have been mind-blowing. I mean, do, do, do we want to do a recap? Like just yeah, yeah, I think we should uh, start talking. Well, so right now we're in, in Beirut, Beirut, and we started off our trip in uh, Petra, right? We, we went to Petra, saw one of the seven wonders of the world. Mind blowing. Yeah, the same. We went to what I didn't even know was a thing. I, it was not even on my map to go to Wadi Rum ever. I mean, you just came up with this idea, and I was like, "Fuck it, let's go." I not say no. You know how that is. You know, these guys hit me up on a one-day notice to go to Turkey, and I said, "Yeah, let's do it. I got a ticket." You know, same thing so, with Egypt. You're like, "Yo, yeah. remember you gave me short notice to go to Turkey? All right, yeah, this yeah. is your turn. You're going to Egypt. All right, let's yeah, do it. Go tomorrow." <laughs> yeah. So, man, what I didn't even know what Wadi Rum was, yeah. and I mean, we we posted a bit about it, you know, people have seen some pictures, but I don't know that that does it justice. No, you know, I don't. It was probably, of all of the places I've been, the most beautiful scenery, the most beautiful landscape. I mean, it looked like you were in a movie. I, I, that looks like a movie about what's, what Mars is like. Right. It they, looks filmed, like, they filmed The Martian there. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One case, yeah. So, but, um, it's, it's, I mean, daytime and nighttime in Wadi Rum was fantastic. At night, driving in the back of this Bedouin guy's pickup truck to go to this other camp, seeing the stars like so bright and the, the, the mountain ranges, like seeing the stars, it was like we were inside of a, a planetarium, you know? And it was just exactly stars like everywhere, it was yeah. fantastic. And then um, that little restaurant at the Memories Camp where uh, we had those juices and the, the whole, what was that? Oh yeah, the one where we went at night after the, when we took the ride and the pickup truck Correct. over to that restaurant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun little restaurant. Uh, another place where everybody was extremely welcome. Exactly. I, I could not believe it. It's uh, let's tell that story about the Bedouin camp over there where um, Yusef. Oh, Yusef. Yeah, Yusef. Man, I, so. I talk about this a lot, man, within my circle of friends, about this, this is, you know, having this feeling for of gratitude and just abundance, no matter where you're at in life, right? I mean, it, I think abundance and lack is a feeling, right? I mean, there's something material to it as well, for sure. But to see that there's people that can live with so little and still just be so giving is 
man, it really puts you in your place. It really you know, it, it gives you a reality check. Yeah. Right? You know, you need to shut the fuck up and quit whining about whatever you got going on because it's not that big of a deal. Our, I mean, our first world problems are exactly that. First world. I mean, well, I mean you, you're never gonna hear me complain about anything ever again after experiencing some of the things I've experienced with some of these people in some of these places. Now, Yusef was a really, really cool guy who we just came across at this Bedouin camp. We're sitting there, they come and offer us tea. It's him and his, you know, they're all family members, right? His yeah. brother and his yeah. cousin and stuff. The dad with, uh, I guess, had three wives. And yeah. And about eight or nine brothers and sisters. And he was talking about, because uh, somebody was like, damn, you got three wives? And he was like, camel's milk. Yeah. <laughs> camel's milk. <laughs> I was like, I gotta give you some of that camel's milk. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're sitting there, and then Yusuf just comes and plops right down between us, yeah. and he's like, where are you guys from? You know, welcome yeah. to Wadi Run. And then he's talking to us about stuff. With broken English. English, yeah. English, but doing as good as he can. Absolutely. Just like, just with a big smile on his and face. Then, and then this guy had such personality and such a sense of humor. He comes over, he's like, where are you guys from? And I was like, oh, I'm from L.A., and he's like, from Miami. And he goes, oh, I'm from Mexico. Yeah. And we were like, wait, what? And he goes, yeah, hola. <laughs> and for some reason, he has a Mexican flag. He had a Mexican flag hanging right there. Yeah. That was so it's funny. The, it's, it's, oh, his name was Jose. Jose, Mexican, yeah. It was Yusef worthy. <laughs> oh, and, uh, man, but, you know, the fact that, you know, these are people that live in caves, literally. The Bedouin people live in caves. I mean, the, when you're walking around Petra, these guys come down from their little hole in the rock over there and, you know, come to offer you a little tour around Petra or a donkey ride up to the up to the monastery or whatnot and I mean there's not much high more material lack than that you know I mean, these people have very 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 little and for somebody like Yusuf to come up with first of all right off the bat such good vibration right. such happy loving vibrations man right. Just as happy as can be, and then on top of that, you know, we had a little exchange there. You know, we we had a little weed pen there with us, and you know, he was he wanted to hit the weed pen. I'm like, hey, you know what it is, right? He's like, he hits the weed pen, and he's going at it. He's going at he's it. Going at it. I'm trying to tell him, like, yo, it's strong, it's strong. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, he was so. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. So then he, you know, he's. Then we, you know, start to kind of build this rapport even more. And then he's like, hey, come over here. And then he brings us over to his little, 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 little yeah, his tent little, hut, whatever that tent, thing was. Yeah, that's where he lives, I guess, you know. And and he's just like, man, no, I have a gift for you guys. And he starts breaking off some hats. He's like, this is hat from Lebanon. And whatever. We're, we're like, I, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, he's, he's like, just getting it. it. I'm like, no, 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 well, this is enough. And he's like, no, 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 here, please have more, you know. <laughs> And then, like, later, somebody tried to give him some money for, like, he gave it to one of our other friends, too, and he tried to give him a little money. We didn't have much on us. He was like, here, here, take this. And for this guy to refuse money and say, like, no, 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 this is a gift from my heart to yours. That was his reply. Right? Like, man. Like, that's love. I got, you know, I'm not filthy rich, but I got a decent and I can live well. You know, I got my house. I got, you know, I live in Miami. Right. Man, if somebody offers me 50 bucks, I'd, I'd normally take it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, for you, Seth, it was all love, man. I yeah. Like, wow, that, yeah. that was really impactful for me. That, that was a real big um, moment in the trip because I was like, wow, these yeah. people are really, like, genuinely happy that people are coming mm -hmm. to share their culture. And they're really happy to show off, you know, the, the elephant in the rock and the little Bedouin rock throwing mm -hmm. game, which, which yeah. I lost to you in the finals. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fun, yeah. though. Like, such a simple yeah. game. Throw, throw pebbles at this yeah. little. I mean, we have a video of it. We, we gotta put that up. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put it up. Fantastic experiences. Yeah. You know, and just amazing people. Could not have had a better experience for, for, with the people in general. I mean, the, the landscape was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. And that's all amazing. But I think what really blows my mind is how amazing these people were. Absolutely. And just what a shitty perspective of the Middle East in general we have. Yeah. You know, I mean, okay, we got Dubai on the map now, and people want to go to Dubai, but just because it's like opulent, you right. go to parties and whatever. We're, we're, the people that go to Dubai still rarely go there because they want to get to know the culture. Correct. Yeah. It's still just to go party. Yeah. I mean, listen, Dubai is great. It's fun. I, I like going there. Yeah. Um, but. 
I think I even told you, like, I don't think I even met one Emirati. authentic Emirati person when I was yeah. there. Yeah. Whereas, um, and, and you know what, the, the experience kind of reflects that because you're not going to go away from that experience feeling like you were embraced by that culture. You know? Sure. Now, so far in Beirut and in Jordan, the, I mean, talk about an embrace, you know, like, there's just like, everybody's like, come come to our house, come have lunch with us, come, you know, come chill, let's go to the beach, let's go to my, my father's mountain house, you know, and we're just like, okay, everybody's like, how long are you staying? We're, oh, until Monday. No, 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 you gotta stay longer, you gotta stay longer, there's more for you to come see. Come stay at my house. Come stay, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll barbecue, we'll, 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 yeah. one person was talking about sacrificing a, a, a lamb or yeah, a sheep yeah, or something. Yeah. To, to cook, to cook for, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're in some crazy cult over here, but uh, they, just, they wanted to make a barbecue. Right, 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 right. And it was coming from a person who, okay, yes, she did know one of our friends and he was making the acquaintance over there and everything, but nevertheless, it's somebody that we just met, you know, within the hour over right. there and already just so embracing and, and welcoming and invite us to go over to her house and she'll make a barbecue and everything and we're gonna she's gonna take us up to this other beach town to you know go show us what the outside of Beirut is like. I'm and, so excited for that. Yeah. Oh I'm so I'm excited. excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. And hiking in the mountains and swimming in the you know, they're talking about this water that's so clear that you can see Well you saw the pictures of the Cenote. Oh that's think, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we got supposed to go. Hopefully on Monday. What, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. Yep. So, you know, I mean, going back to that, it's just people, you, you can be happy. You can be in your little love bubble, man. You can be in, in, in a feeling of gratitude and, and happiness, no matter what's going on. It's like, that's yours, right? And man, whether it's been through psychedelic experiences, whether it's been through just, you know, like meditation, talking to people who are wiser and, and, and more intelligent than me, whatever it is, like that concept does come a lot, up a lot, you know, that the way you feel, the way you, you know, vibrate outwardly towards the world is always a reflection of what's going on inside. It's not so much a reflection of what's going on outside. And sometimes people say that and it just sounds so fucking, you know, like when you live in Miami or LA and you got this nice lifestyle and everything, it just sounds so fucking dead. Right, yeah. But seeing stuff like that really shows it. It really brings it out, man. And I thought it was so beautiful. It's been fantastic so far. Now let's let's talk about um, more about the the current state of Beirut. Yeah, I mean yeah, Lebanon definitely. in general. It's I mean it's really bad. I, I've never been to a country that's currently experiencing such a uh, downtime. So socio socio economically, their financial system is a mess. The currency is has is devaluing every single day more and more. There's a lot of logistics around being over here. Um, first place we got caught was uh, data. If you let's do it. Hit, hit, hit. Hit, hit. T Mobile, at least, probably all the other carriers as well, charge $15 per megabyte for data. So I passed out at night and I woke up in the morning with a message saying I had $640 worth of international run. Make sure that if you guys have any stamps from Israel on your passport, that's a big no-no. You, you will not get in. They will not let you through the border. Um, that was an interesting thing for us to learn too. The, the power plant over here, I didn't even know this. Uh, I guess was, however long ago was there was an explosion. I, I gotta figure out what exactly what the deal was, whether it was there was a bomb or just a malfunction or whatnot. But um, there's no no power grid to the city anymore. Everything over here runs on generators. So pretty much the entire country, you know, maybe with a very few exceptions, uh, only have electricity at certain times of the day because you have to let the generator rest. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they have it on a, like a 12 hour on, six hour off, I don't know, let it rest for like five hours again or something uh, on this, on a schedule like that. And pretty much nowhere here, unless it's a very luxurious place that has multiple generators, um, nowhere ha here has 24 seven electricity. 
had no idea about that either. Um, so it's kind of a, a logistical issue yesterday for sure. You know, no data, no electricity to charge the phone. Got that all charged here though. And I don't get, you know, I keep getting charged $50 per minute for data. Um, yeah, those are just some interesting facts about the country, but so far I'm actually already loving being here. Oh, <clears throat> one more interesting fact as well was that the currency over here is so devalued and it fluctuates so much that the exchange rate over here is basically by the hour by the minute even, I don't know. I think every time you go to exchange cash, they check what it is right there at that very moment and change it, right? Um, so I think the exchange rate is somewhere around 6,400 lira for the dollar. I, I believe I have that right. But, um, you know, impossible to know how much you're actually gonna get for it. Um, if you try to swipe a credit card here, um, the exchange rate, you get so fucked that I think somebody said they paid $34 for two cups of coffee, you know, so you really have to bring cash to figure out right now. Don't try to go pull money out on the ATM because you get completely fucked rate. There's some other countries that are like this as well. I've been to Venezuela. Um, that was the case over there. I think in Argentina. Um, and there's some other countries where, where that's the case too. Do not try to just show up there and swipe your American credit card. Uh, you'll get totally ripped off. Got to bring some cash in pocket. Um, exchange it on, the, find somebody who's willing to exchange it for you on the black market and pay for everything in lira, not in dollars, not in US dollars. Um, yeah, I kind of screwed up because when I figured this out, I had already left the United States. I've, I've been out of the country now for over a month at this point. And... I didn't have dollars with me. I just left my cash at home. Never thought to bring it. By the hour, they, yeah. somebody was saying that, like, for you, for you to exchange money, it's not like, oh, what's the currency exchange rate today? It's like you look it up. What was it half an hour ago versus now? Like, if you guys show up there in thirty minutes, it might be a different exchange rate because yeah. it's devaluing that much. And it's, I mean, and it's even more challenging because you know the goods in the stores. Like, you go to the grocery stores, nothing has uh, price tags on it. Well, just a couple places that I've been, you know, I, I haven't right. seen them all, but you know, everywhere you go, like, even get a donut, I couldn't even see the price on the donuts. I was like, wow, this is, yeah. you know, it, it's unfortunate. But you know what? I respect so much the people of this city in Beirut because, like, you know, there's a sense of, you know, it's a tough time. You can feel it. It's like yeah. almost palpable in the air. But everybody is still, you know, they're they're, they're putting their fucking. They're putting their feet on the ground and they're, they're getting out there to, to, to find the solutions to, to keep the economy going. Like there, these people are, are are what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, there's no quitting them. You know, they, they, yeah, resilient, resilient. There you yeah. go. There, I mean, these people they love their city, they love the culture here, and they're like, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna allow these downtimes to affect us. People are still out having a great time. They're still very welcoming. When we went to uh, Solomon last night, I can't tell you how many times people. I, I bumped into nice somebody. Ghost, and, you know, right. We spent all day yesterday I sleeping. Know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I would bump into somebody and I say, "Oh my bad, I'm sorry." And they go, "Are you American?" I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're my brother. You're my brother." And hugging yeah. up. Oh, let me get a picture with yeah. you. And I was like, "Oh man, this is so cool." Showing you like this intrinsic wisdom that there's no people fighting. Like you're black, I'm white. They're Lebanese. We're you know we're American. It's like. They know that who's beefing, that's the people up at the exactly. top. It's not you and me. Yeah, exactly. And then even they, they have Israeli friends, and that's all cool. They, you know, that, that's very wise, right. right, to not pick up, you know, personal beef with another individual. And it's, it's so stupid. And so I don't see that at all with them. It's still very, very lighthearted yeah. towards everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and still very, very much passionate about their city and, and, and the lifestyle here. I mean... Just meeting Ramon and, and, and hearing mm -hmm. how much love he has for this this country and this city and, and everything that he's done. I mean, he's an incredibly talented dude. 
So for him to pick up and, and yeah. move here, he doesn't have to live here. He can live anywhere he wants. And, and so can be said for most of the people we met. They Correct. all have money. They could all leave. They all leave here, and they decide not to because they're so in love with their country. That, I mean, that says a lot about the city and these people specifically. And it's 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 just so heartwarming, you know. It, it's it gives me a lot of um, motivation to be my best self, you know? Because I do want to come back. I do want to see it again. I, I, you know, shoot, I would invest here. You know, I buy property here. It's a beautiful city. And there's a lot of, um, you know, development still going on. I mean, just sitting here, I can see two or three cranes already, skyscrapers yeah. going yeah. up. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be down for long. We, we know that. Yeah, and, and everybody says there's, it's been a, a lot of, you know, rebounds, bouncing back and, and construction and development going on in the last, you know, maybe five, six months. Right, most, yeah, right, 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 right. So, I mean, I was completely uneducated on the whole entire topic before I came here. I intentionally stayed away from the news, whatever that, that is, you know, that pops up on our tube at home. Mm -hmm. um, so coming over here for me was extremely educating. Right. To see, you know, I did, to understand exactly what happened with that explosion and how the cascading effect turned into, you know, the the economic situation, because it wasn't just one thing. It's not just, oh, a bomb goes off and now the economy is shit. It's, there, were, there, there was more to that, right? Right, so, I mean, things were de, de escalated. I mean, uh, what's the word? Disintegrating, no. Things were starting to go bad before the explosion went off, and that was almost two years ago, I think. Yeah, it was about two, two years, years ago, ago. Uh, in a few days. Yeah, so there was, I mean, we have footage, I'm, I'm dying to post some of the, some of the footage of what downtown still looks like. Um, it was just very interesting to see, right, around the, the explosion site, you know, now that everything's getting rebuilt. You know. This is a suit, another very interesting part of town over here. I'm going to flip this around so you guys can see it. Like, over there, it's a very different type of architecture, right? over here it's all these modern buildings everything being built right now okay big sky rises so we're on around like the part of town where the bomb explosion happened and obviously you can see on this side wow well, wait a second like right? this is some things are still bombed out right? never got I'm sure there's just no money over there to anything everything and over on that side uh, that those are the buildings that probably got probably got bombed out and got replaced but so you can see as we're getting closer to where the explosion happened that basically all of a sudden the architecture is going to change it was like this I remember when I was uh, living in Hamburg as well you have these sections of the city I'm gonna pause this real quick because I'm going near a jackhammer. Where there would be these certain sections of the town that were very modern and the square right next to it was very, you know, pre-World War II looking. And you know, was that, that was all of the, those were the areas that had been shelled during World War II um, that had to be rebuilt, right? So you hate to see like this same drastic change in architecture all of a sudden because everything had to be rebuilt and they're still getting rebuilt this is like two years ago right and half of the stuff is still not rebuilt because there was so much damage done we missed seeing what it looked like when it was still destroyed right. but now you can see like a very uh, specific delineated area where it's all new construction and you, you, you walk through a certain part of town and it's all these very Old looking buildings, right? From you know, when, when I don't know when they, they were built, but certainly mm -hmm. much longer ago. And all of a sudden, you know, next block over is like modern buildings, right. brand new modern, modern buildings. buildings. Yeah, like Beautiful something ones you too. see in I don't know, Miami or right. something, right? right. 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 And um, and then there's like this really classic looking set of buildings right behind it. And it was interesting. I, I had that same. Uh, I got to experience that as well when I lived in Hamburg because, you know, they got shelled hard during the World War II, you know, and you have like, all of a sudden there's like some pre-World War II building over here that this, uh, this, uh, um, 
to this church or some historic building, and then right next to it, some huge, tall skyscraper or something. And then right next to it again, there's like some, you know, building from the, you know, early 1800s yeah, or yeah. something. And then they, you know, all that's getting rebuilt. And it's just interesting to see. And there's still a lot of damage done over there. Yeah. There's a lot of buildings that are still totally you know, uh, either under renovation or trying to get it back. Some of them, it's just, they're just in complete disarray still. They, evidently, they haven't had the money to try to build it back up. But um, just all considering that, you know, everything that's happened, the fact that there was an explosion that blew up half the town. The currency is so devalued. What was the currency the exchange rate? I think so. If we do it on the black market, I um, can't remember what the exchange rate is, but I think if you do it, I think it goes from like, it's like 40 times yeah, more money so, or something than if you exchange it at the bank. When I was looking into getting money from an ATM, mm -hmm. I wanted to get like 200 US dollars equivalent, right? And it said it would be 300,000 um, Lebanese was it lira? Lira. Yeah. Whereas that same $200, if you were exchanging on the black market, yeah. you're going to get a few million mm -hmm. Lebanese lira. Yeah. yeah. So that is, I mean, that, yeah. that's a huge. So just to put it in, just to push it, put it into perspective. Uh, I actually have that receipt still. So do I. I have a picture, a picture of, of it. Yeah, of our three smoothies. Three smoothies. Three smoothies. So, if you pay with the credit card, and you know, if you pay with the credit card, implicitly, what's happening is you're getting this official exchange rate between you know your American bank and and whatever credit card system you know you're swiping over here, and. Our three smoothies were going to come out to eight hundred and thirty-six dollars or something. Eight hundred and thirty-six fucking dollars for three smoothies. Can so, you can you imagine if we hadn't known? Yeah. And just swiped the card. Exactly. Pay for three smoothies, I, which I think Aaron did at one of his dinners. So, fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah. So. And I've been to Venezuela. Was like this when I went to Venezuela eight years ago. You know, it was the same situation. Like. There were two totally different exchange rates, right? Mm -hmm. So funny thing for everyone, me and Steven did that. We came over here ignorant, we had no idea. Just been bounced around with the American Express, no foreign transaction fees, just swipe it wherever you want. You show up here, man, with zero dollars in our pocket. Well, we had four euros. <laughs> <laughs> and this is two like veteran experienced travelers making yeah. this mistake. Yeah. Like, so we show, show up here. <laughs> With our hands empty, like, what are we yeah. gonna do? Well, first we don't even know, right? Well, I guess the first thing that I noticed was that about every 10 minutes, I would get a text message from T-Mobile saying, your international roaming charges are already at like $50. Uh, text whatever number to stop your data. And then it was like 10 minutes later, it was like $100. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, I had to send a few WhatsApp messages for us to even get to the Airbnb. By the time we got here, I had six hundred and forty dollars mm -hmm. worth of international roaming charges. Mm -hmm. That's within you know an hour and a half. Right. So I think they charge about fifteen dollars per megabyte over here. Can't use your phone if you guys ever come here. That's little travel notes for you guys. If you come to Lebanon, bring cash. Do not expect to use your your normal phone over here. Um, so that's how I first noticed, noticed something was, was kind of something was going on. At least you had service. My I, the text I got from Sprint said, um, you know, you're going to be charged two dollars and fifty cents a minute for every phone call, and yeah. you don't have any data. Have a nice trip. <laughs> Go. Cool. <laughs> I mean, fifty dollars per minute or no data. I'm just, yeah. No, I'm hey, I'm yeah. fine with no data. Yeah. After yeah. hearing what happened to you, I was yeah. like. Yeah. So, you know, and then we get over here and, and somebody tells us this whole situation about the credit card. And we're like, well, fuck, well, what do we do? Luckily, we're Luckily. so blessed that we have some really cool people around us over here. They were able to kind of take us under their wing. Like They're somebody literally taking care of us. Babysitting two grown ass fucking men. They're <laughs> showing up places with just. Uh, a phone <laughs> that don't work. 
just the phone and, and just fucking smiles, dude. Like, <laughs> and please feed us. <laughs> Seriously, they were going to us some cash. He's like, here, this should last you a few days. I feel like, like, I'm in second grade. My mom, like, giving me my lunch money. Don't spend it all. And I'm like, fuck, every time I spend it, we go to Uber or something. I'm like, fuck, it's running low. And that's what we got for the rest of the trip right now. So. Well, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll figure it out. But, man. Boy, did we come here unprepared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, the other option, I guess, was swipe your credit card, which is going to be $800 for a fucking smoothie. Mm. And I think so. For comparison, I think those $800 for a smoothie went down to like, it was still an expensive place. So that was like a luxury right. establishment, yeah. I guess. So it was still like 30 bucks for three smoothies, which mm. is kind of ex- no, medium expensive yeah. anywhere, especially for Lebanon. Right. That's certainly expensive here. For, for the population here. So from 836 to $30, that's how big the difference. Swiping your credit card is versus paying cash. So, so the to know before you go to Lebanon. Yeah, but you know, so all of that, man, the fact that, you know, it's $800 for a smoothie, the fact that if you, if you don't, you know, walk around with cash, oh, I want to show people the type of wad, we can post something like that. They walk around with wads of money this big because you count money here in the millions, right? It's like each bill is like one hundred thousand lira, and you go to a, you know the, go to get your free smoothies. It's one million three hundred thousand lira for a smoothie. So people literally walk around with wads of money this big and rubber bands in their pocket. There's no, you know, I mean, I, it looks like somebody is going to the strip club and they're getting ready to just throw, make it rain. Like everybody's drug dealers. Just or fucking the stacks. Yeah, yeah. And if you go to the bank over here, supposedly you can't even pull money out. Yeah. The, the whole banking system is completely collapsed at this point. Like, you, I think if you if, if you have money in the bank, there's some limit on like maybe two hundred dollars per week that you can even remove. Yeah, you can live off two hundred dollars a week. Yeah, you yeah. Know, when you're used to living in a metropolitan city that's yeah. not cheap to live in, um, it's times are tough here. But 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 again. Still, the people are still very much like, "Welcome to Lebanon." You know, let's go, let's go have lunch, come have dinner, try this food, try this drink. Like, okay, big yeah. smiles on everybody's face, and again, the most giving people ever. Yeah. They want to go take us for a barbecue. They want to go take us to this place, to that place. It's like, no, 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 here, here's some money. The poor, poor American fuck who didn't come here with no knowledge whatsoever takes the money so you don't starve to death. You know, like. And somebody show up in Miami like I don't have the money to eat. Well, you dumbass should have fucking planned a little more, man. Um, puts it in perspective, man. Yes, man. Really yeah. does. So I'm excited to, you know, for what's in store for the rest of the trip. To, you know, we, I mean, we're still planning to do what? Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, and I'm going to drag you back to Palestine. I want to go yeah, see, yeah, yeah. see through the Palestinian walls over there because that, I mean, that's as valuable of experience as, you know, I think you can get from traveling, you know, to going to have nice food and going to a nice party and all that, that's amazing, but I don't think you gain nearly as much from, from any of that than you do as kind of just seeing the culture and seeing, seeing people struggle and seeing how they're still happy and putting you in place, you know. That's actually, you just made a really good point because a lot of people, when they travel and they see people that are in a, in a situation that they consider to be inferior to theirs, their immediate reaction is to go, oh, I feel bad for them, or I feel sorry for them, or I have pity for them, and it's like, no, 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 no. These people, despite not having what it is that you think is gonna make you know, them happy, if they don't have the new cars, or the iPads, or the this, or the that, these people are happy. Yeah. They have love, they have uh, meaning, they have companionship, in, you know, regardless of the situation, so, you know, I just, I, you know, I, I just try to keep that in mind, and I always try to tell people, like, you know, don't feel sorry for people, you know, just try to understand them, where they're coming from, and uh, it'll make your experience that much, that much more fulfilling. Sure. And I think it really depends on what you mean by feeling sorry for them, right? There's like, there's like empathy versus sympathy, you know? It's like, yeah, if you want to empathize with them and, and, and try to understand what they feel and... Um, you know, if, if that's somehow driving you to maybe help out a little bit, that's okay. But to just sit there and feel sorry, like to assume that your life is better than theirs, right. that, you know, I, I think that's what you really mean, right? It's like yeah. people sitting there going, 
oh, well, poor them. They must not be happy. You know, you, you might want to dive in a little deeper before you make that assumption. Sure. Certainly if that awakens your desire to help out, to, you know, show a little love, to show a little extra effort, to, you know, make somebody's day nicer because you recognize they go through a lot of struggle, by all means, you know, feel sorry for them if that's what that means for, mm. for you in that case, right? But, yeah, it's... Uh, I think a lot of people I even hear saying like they don't want to go see something like go to Palestine and see the situation. They don't want to go see some poor country in Africa because all it does is is create this feeling of sadness. And you know I think there's so much to be learned, man. When you go to places like that, you learn more than that. Anything else I can imagine, anything, uh, anything else, and that's the value of travel. And, uh, and you know I think people who refrain from getting to see places like that, you know, they're, they're missing out on a lot. Yeah. And it's one of those things like, uh, you don't even know what you're missing out. Yeah. When you don't, when you don't get to experience it firsthand. And, and that's really unfortunate because I wish more people, I wish everybody could have the, the same kind of experiences where, you know, these eye-opening experiences where you learn something about somebody else and somebody else's culture. It's fantastic. You know? And then now we can take that back to where we live and say, hey, 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 don't don't believe what you're seeing on the news. That's not yeah. what the case is. This is this. Like I can show you yeah. pictures of me hanging out with a Bedouin in the desert. Yeah. And he was chilling. Everybody and he, big he, ass he smiles. Giving on the face. me stuff. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and especially here with Lebanon, because I think there's such negativity placed on it, you know, the news and everything. I mean to I I, I would love to bring this back and have however many people watch this, for them to get a different perspective. We, we even consider going to the Middle East in general for a lot of people, you know what I mean? And specifically to Lebanon. I think it's completely off the map for most people. Yeah. Like most people, when they want to go on a trip, you want to go to Paris, you want to go to London, you know, and all of those places are amazing, man. We've been to most of them, all of them, whatever, you know. Amazing experiences. Mm -hmm. Definitely not complaining. Yeah, for sure. Should you go there? One hundred percent. But to completely rule this whole side of the world off, man, on the, on the, you know, on the idea that you heard on the news that this is, you know, it's, it's just chaotic and you know, people, it's it's dangerous mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, you're missing out on so many opportunities, man. If if I can just, if if people can listen to this and go, oh wow. Yeah. These guys had that much fun over there, That's and, they, and they had you know such a good experience with the people. Maybe I should go. I think if more people get to see this man and that taboo, that that prejudice gets dropped, that would be amazing. Yeah, but also to go with like an open mind because I do know a lot yeah. of Americans specifically who travel and and they're very close minded. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to eat that. That looks weird. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to go there. You know, it's kind of. I, I think it's sketchy. It's like no, no. And one point that you made also. I, you know, you and I both traveled a lot, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. I have found the Middle East to be the most fascinating region in the world. Brother, I, I think um, I, I think I have to agree with you. Yeah. There's a lot of fascinating places, but today I think this has been the most impressive. It, it certainly has made me want to come here much more often. Correct, yeah. And, and it's everything from like, um, you know, the Arabic language, uh, you know, how it's spoken and written. I, I find it a very fascinating language. And then, you know, the food is so different from our food and, and different cultures. I mean, sort of the different customs that they have around food. It's like, uh, it's, it's so different than what I was used to growing up that every time I come here, I'm just like, wow! You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and tell people a little bit about, like, you know, what your background is. Because, I mean, it's not like you just spent your whole life in the United States. Right, right, just right. this mono, monocultural right, right, right. guy. So, uh, you, you too. Like, I, yeah. I was born in London, in the UK. I lived in Africa when I was really young. Moved to the U.S. When, um, in Ghana. In Ghana. Yeah. Moved to the U.S. when I was, like, nine, when my mom remarried. Moved back to Ghana for about another year when I was 11, 12, some, somewhere in there. And moved back to the U.S. and then um, lived in L.A. You know, until present day, um, with a few exceptions, you know, Denver and Phoenix. <clears throat> but um, so yeah, you know, I, I, I've lived in different parts of the world, traveled a lot. So it's it, like you said, it's, it's not some dude who just lived in the 
down on beach his whole life. Yeah. It's barely seen more like now. Yeah. I've seen some stuff. Yeah, it's so interesting to travel, you know, whatever, pretty much every single continent, right? And to still be so mind blown. Mm-hmm. To think that you kind of, oh, I, I've traveled, I, I've, you know, I've opened my mind, I, I've, I learned what I need to learn. Nah, you're just never there, man. There's always something <laughs> yeah. to blow your mind. Yeah, yeah. Dude, there's been so many times where we're just in the car driving or something, and then you just come across like a scene or a, a cityscape or a a uh, rock formation and you're just like, what? Like, I, I let out audible, wow, all the time. And people yeah. are like, what? I'm just like, yeah. sorry, I just I get excited when I see cool stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, whoa, 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 chill, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's amazing, amazing. I do this for the rest of my life, dude. For real, it doesn't get tiring. But yeah, I guess, uh, man, just tons of love to all the Lebanese people, to all the Jordanian people. You guys have made like an amazing, amazing last couple weeks. Uh, out of my life over here and I'm just so much appreciation for you guys you guys have been amazing seriously I couldn't expect more I couldn't go back to the United States with higher reviews from you guys and shit this is we'll be seeing each other a lot more soon and yeah, much love to everyone watching this brother a pleasure doing this always with you so yeah let's keep it going shokran shokran <laughs>